up everybody today I'm gonna be going over some of the gear that I use or prefer to use now you know I've been diving for over 10 years I want to say and throughout you know progression and going frequently and trying new gear you'll you'll learn your own preferences in gear and what you like to use I've had a lot of requests on setups that I use and guns that I use so I'm just gonna go through and explain some of the stuff I use and why I use it or what works for me. Alright, so the first, right off the bat, let's get into the guns. So this is a Cap 100 with an Aussie reel. So Cap guns, they're really good, really accurate, really powerful. It's the, it's the enclosed track. When I go through all my guns, you'll notice the one thing they have in common is that they have an enclosed track. They're easy to load. You don't have to line it up on a rail and then slide it all the way down the rail. Once you put the butt of the shaft inside the tip of the enclosed track, you just slide it all the way down and pop it in. It's fast, it's effective. Um, also, the accuracy on enclosed track, because everything is straight, it's easy to just kind of point and shoot. And that's how I feel like I was able to adjust to the guns easier because everything's enclosed track, everything's a straight line. Now, the thing about enclosed track is that if your shaft is bent and you load it and then you shoot it, that vibration from a bent shaft in this track will shatter this track. So never load a bent shaft into an enclosed track. You will literally shatter, shatter your gun. Um, other stuff that I do on all my guns, as you'll see, a tip guard. All of them have top flopper. Meaning that the flopper, flopper is when you usually buy a gun, it's on the bottom, but I run mine on the top. It's just a preference. I have a video, I'll throw the link in the description on changing your flopper. And flashers. So you can see I have a little Concord Cast Castmaster. And unlike the video that I made that I put the Castmaster on top of the line anchor, here's another spot that you can put it on with just a split ring. It's where the bungee is. So connect it to the bungee and connect it to the stopper knot on your rear line. That is where you connect it. So it's not on the anchor line. I know people have their own experiences with it on the anchor line. But personally, I've never had a fish rip off or lose line or cut mono with anything on the anchor line, on the line anchor. And then the reel. Aussie reels, they make some of the sickest colors. So you can customize your track and reel color with Aussie reels. And I use Aussie reel line as well. And lastly, on all my guns, on the butt of the gun, I create this little handle. That way, if I'm swimming out on my float with two guns, I can clip one and I can switch back and forth on the guns that I wanna use. I use that line saver like I do on the fish, fish stringers um, so that the line lasts a long time and it doesn't chafe or anything or it doesn't break. So that's my first gun. And that's one of my go-tos for reef. So it's a hundred centimeter so that I can shoot to walls. I can shoot in, in uh, cracks. You can shoot um, kumus, munus, taape, vimempatris, alihis. You can shoot all of that because it's a short gun. You wait for the fish to come in real close for shallow water. This is kind of my go-to gun. As you can see, I have that video called Point and Shoot about my Hatch Rhino. And this is, this gun Mike made for me and it's a, it's my favorite gun, hands down. It's my go-to Point and Shoot, bread and butter. The gun um, is ballasted, so it's like super easy to track fish in the water. The downfall of that is if the water is surgy and you're, you're diving in surf, as soon as that surge comes in, your gun is going with it. You're gonna be trying to fight it. And every time that I fought it and tried to take a shot on a fish, I miss. That's when I would miss. But other than that, when the water's calm and the water's nice, this gun is just effortlessly tracking and shooting. I paired this one with an Omilu hatch reel. You see I have that same handle, flasher, enclosed track with top flopper, and spirit tip. 
All right, so next I'm gonna talk about my KCS 130, which was a gift to me. And I've shot a lot of firsts with this gun. I'm gonna show my first Puku, my first Mu, uh, first Knife Jaw, the first Shibi, first Mahi. Like, there's a lot of firsts on this gun, so I just cannot let go of this gun. Plus, KCS doesn't build guns anymore, so even more so, I wanna hold on to this gun. It shoots really well for me, and I have no problem with it. And you can see I have this sick custom paint job done by 126 Customs. So I paired this one with a Salvamar reel. And I have a video of me spooning the reel. I'll drop that in the description as well. You see, I still have that butt. And this gun is used for deep reef. I used to use it for blue water, but I recently got a new gun that I use for blue water now. So same thing, I have that flasher, my line anchor, spear tip, top flopper. And then this one has three five eight bands. This is for the range, this is for the deeper ledges where if you're hovering at the top, you might be, you might run into some, you know, pelagics, onos, mahis, ukus, uh, and for deeper spots where the move just doesn't come in. Three bands gives me enough power for range so I don't have to hang as long. Lastly, this is my newest gun. This is a big boy. This is a 140 cap Kubera. And this is built to shoot something big. It has four 5 bands. It has that slip tip from uh, just the tip, slip tips, bolt cover. And this is set up for a breakaway, no reel. So a breakaway is, is when this line can attaches to a bungee or a float line that, can, that attaches to your float, your blue water float. So that when you shoot a fish, something big, you're not physically fighting it on the other end with a reel and the fish is fighting the, the blue water float with that man with all that resistance so you kind of just along for the ride i haven't we haven't done blue water in a while so i haven't got the chance to take this gun out but i'm definitely eager to take this out and just just shoot it i mean i think loading it four bands is hard work in itself but Hopefully once COVID is done, I'll be going on some spearfishing trips and putting this bad boy to use. A well, Cap 140 Kubera. Eventually I'll shoot something big with it. Now I'm gonna talk about my dive float. So dive float is required 50 feet within every diver to have one with a dive flag. This is to keep you safe in the water. It's the boat captain's responsibility that is moving and driving around on the water to pay very attention to who's on the water, what's on the water, and to call out any of these flags so that you give it the proper space away from the diver to keep them safe and so, you know, so we don't get run over. So this is a float I use. I got it from Hanapa. And um, I also put uh, one of their fanny packs on top. And this is just in case I find any you know, shells, you know, fishing lead, any treasure, basically any type of treasure that I can find. It can fit in here, or if it's bigger than that, of course, gotta swim back to the boat. So, I use on top of the float. There's uh, the most important thing besides the dive flag I have is this rescue streamer. So, this streamer opens up and creates this big, long yellow line. That if for whatever reason I separate from the crew, maybe get caught in a rip current or you know i shoot a fish and then the fish just goes on a wild fight with me down you know who knows how far that this streamer i can open up so that i can be spotted from the from the boat um from the sky so and, and it's super light all you do is you just clip it on your float i recommend everybody having this this was a gift given to me and even when I'm just fishing on the boat and not diving, I keep this in my pocket. I clip it onto my shorts and I keep it in my pocket because you never know. The last thing you want to do is get complacent in the water. So right here, rescue streamer. And then I attach a, a kui or a stringer on top. So I make this one kind of long and it does, it's that same one that I made on top of the video on uh drop a link in my bio on that one <laughs> it doesn't even smells like fish but but it's a long and 
people ask me if I have a belt cooey and or if I use a belt cooey. So I have a belt cooey. I only use it for taco, and that's only to help attract fish to come in. I used to carry fish on my belt, but I mean, there's so much hazards of that, right? There's eels, there's sharks, and then there's the weight. The weight and how you gotta maneuver kicking with all that weight, and I just didn't wanna deal with that anymore. That was my main reason, was like all the weight and the stuff in the way. And it feels good, right? You, you can touch the fish every time that um, <laughs> you have something good, you feel the size and stuff like that. But now on, I just keep my fish on my float. It helps me drop and help me be a better diver in the water. On top of this float too, I added a bunch of extra tuna clips. And this is for like when I go three prong, or for another spot, I want to bring maybe two different guns based on what I know is there, based on the fish. So. I bring these extra tuna clips and that's why those butt, on the butt of every gun, I have that little piece of mono and line saver so I can clip on my gun. Right, so this is my tagline. It's a kimchi tagline from Ruben Kim on Kauai. I'll drop his contact information in my description. It's really tough, durable taglines and it floats. It's a 40 foot length that I requested and it's white. He has a bunch of different other colors Whatever, however you want to customize your gear, I just went with white. And one of the most important parts is the anchor. And I put a squid skirt on the anchor. So while I'm moving spot to spot, right, looking for the fish piles, I'm going to hold my anchor or kind of dangle it low to the bottom. And this creates like an extra added flasher. So this one actually attracted a uku. When I dropped it to the bottom, and Uku came in, <laughs> I went down, I missed it. <laughs> I reloaded, I started bobbing the flasher because I could stay up and I can move the, the float line up and down to bob the flasher. The Uku came back, I took another drop, ended up shooting him. So something I do is adding this, you know, a little extra added flasher, just a squid skirt that covers my one pound dive anchor. So mask. This is the mask I use. It's the Hammerhead Amber Lens with the GoPro mount so I can get all those shots and I use the dive housing with the GoPro 8. And I use the AQA snorkel. Let's see how this thing goes. So I use this snorkel. It's actually the snorkel that my dad used. So this, it's not the same snorkel but it's the same uh, model that my dad used. So when I started spearfishing and diving it's the same you know i would use this mask so this is the same snorkel that i use it's the aqualung impulse 3. so it's my go-to snorkel I've, I've tried different ones but i'm just not used to it i this one's for me and then anytime you get a brand new mask i'll drop the link in the description on how to defog your mask so that it doesn't fog up on every dive so fins Fins is another thing that, you know, comes down to preference. I've been through dive bars, composites, Omer power blades, what else? Moanas, and Cap. Cap makes these carbon fins that I really like. I've, out of all the fins, these ones I feel like they have the most power of. Say the divers have a lot of power too and they're like practically indestructible but these cap fins that yeah i feel like there's a lot of power in every kick that i make and um, if you can see like of course it looks like there's a lot of scratches but joe from one day signs captain joe i should say he puts this clear film over the fins we all do um that way whenever you know you're laying on the reef that film or that sticker that clear sticker acts sacrificial to keep your blade looking nice and lasting longer less shots for cracking so you can see that yeah, it's really scratched up on both of them and then i had these um opelu fin stickers i'll drop a link in the description for these we sell these so just an added flasher whenever you're dropping it, all of it helps any predatorial fish 
likes flashes. That's that's what we learn. That's what we, that's what everybody says, is the little flashing and the flashers and the silver is all what the predatorial fish like. So anything that you can use to your advantage. So I put these on. Comes to the weight belt. So I've used multiple weight belts. You know, you get the soft one or the fabric one with the buckle or the clamp buckle, I should say. But that one always seems to loosen for me or the, the clamp buckle begins to break. So I got the actual belt buckle type. Uh, I can't remember what brand this was, but it has, um, I think I got it from Hanapa, but they have each individual puka, just like an actual belt that you wear going out. And remember I said I have a kui on top of my my belt so the kui the um stringer is a lot smaller and it goes in this omir clip and it's mainly for taco you know when you're hunting moves and stuff the taco on your back even ukus um just just an added attraction that'll increase your chances of shooting fish i wrap a knife on my belt and yeah some people like prefer it on the leg some people wear it on their arm but uh, for me, I like it on the belt. It's accessible. Sometimes when I put on my leg, either I put the strap too tight so my leg is throbbing, or the strap too loose where whenever I'm kicking, the knife is falling off my leg. So I wear a knife on the belt. A couple of little other dive accessories that I use, um, you know, dive watch. So this is a Sunto D4i. Uh, I bought this one secondhand from a friend that I used to go diving with a lot and it's a good dive watch so the reason why I love using a dive watch and it's so hard to dive without it like when the battery dies or if I forget it like it's so hard to dive without a dive watch because I'm so dependent on it I'm looking at how deep I am in the water what what depth range we're at and how long I'm in the water so that when I'm on the surface I'm watching my breathe up time and making sure that it's double the amount of time on the surface compared to when I was on the bottom. So I mean, you can ask any diver that uses a dive watch when you when you don't have when you use one and you forget yours or or battery dies. It's so hard to get comfortable again because you're so reliant on this thing. This is a great tool for you to even just get better and see where you're at, see what, um, how deep you're dropping. You can hit your personal best and your personal best bottom time. It's all tracked and saved. And this one and a jack's diving locker on the big island you can send it in and they'll service it i always send it to them when i need a battery replacement or when i need parts like i got these new bands so this dive watch or dive computer as they call it should last you a very long time it's a hefty investment but it's well worth it and then shark bands so shark bands make this deterrent shark deterrent uh, I don't know how well it works. I never had a shark swim that close to me when I wasn't looking, but I wore it on my ankle. Uh, yeah, shark bands. I'll drop the link in the description. And my throw flasher. So everybody, <laughs> everybody uses these. Walmart spoons are the cheapest. They're like 98 cents for like four of them. You throw them, you lose them. No big deal, right? But you can make one of these. A crack pipe, as we call them. Throw flasher crack pipe. And I'll throw the link in the description on how you can make one for cheap Because I made this one for me and whenever I need more I just grab more PVC call up a friend who works with PVC and then he drops off a bunch and then I'm set I have a bunch you know and These the difference between throwing this and throwing this it's a spoon well, a spoon will flutter right like this and I swear it's pretty fast causes a lot of action and rouse up the fish sometimes i bend the spoon like this at an angle and then it drops like this so same thing that fast action riles up the fish so when you're trying to drop on it it swims away when you throw this one the crack pipe it drops like this a nice slow and steady left to right drop all the way to the bottom and that's what you want because you want that fish to come in calmly check it out give you enough time to line up that perfect shot it comes to three prongs, I have a Yokoji a seven footer, and then I have the Evolve three piece nine footer, and they're both they're both fast, they're both light. It depends what you're trying to shoot. Sometimes a nine footer in 
close quarters or under cracks when you're trying to when you're trying to look in, in on your under uh, overhang and it's kind of dark and you kind of stick your head in to so your eyes adjust to the light and you're holding a three prong right here the nine footer is like sticking out way way back it, it gets kind of hard so you might want to have a good mix of three prongs like if i had a six footer and a nine footer i mean these three prongs are you know really expensive that's why the three piece one that i have this one is um it's good because you know if i wanted to make it shorter i can you know there's there's the three pieces or i can make it the full length and get the full power so i use the i wrap the wire around the three prong and use their evolve heat shrink and so far it's holding up so that wire that wraps around it it creates like these little grip grooves so when you grab it it's a lot stronger and then i also have their slip tip there are three prong slip tips hopefully i gotta use this soon maybe try to shoot something big one of the maybe trying to lure or something so that's what i use for three prongs and it comes in this this travel bag so i keep it real nice and organized i keep extra like tourmaline you know marine grease and put some on the threads before and before every dive yeah i do it before every dive and that just helps protect the threads as you're threading it on um it's water resistant water or waterproof um it doesn't rust however but you just you just want to take that added measure preventative maintenance that's the number one right preventative maintenance so that your gear lasts long and you get you know you bang for your buck and of course, out of all your diamond gear, another very important piece is your wetsuit. This is the Lua wetsuit that's releasing the end of this month, October, November, 2020. And this suit is a black suit that I have these little battle scars that I call them. Because on the Lua, you know, when it's in the, in the hole, it has reef rash. And in the cave, right, it's circling around the cave. And as soon as the light hits it, just the, the colors light up. You know, you can see those stripes, those silvers, and then the orange sun that hits it creates these, you know, colors. So that's what I try to portray in this suit, as all my other suits that I try to portray the actual fish details in the suit. That's where that stand out and blend in, right? You're blending in as a fish, but, you, but these suits stand out to what everything else is on the market. So this is a <laughs> this this suit has the titanium coating on the inside and what this does it reflects your body heat back to you so it keeps you really warm in the water for very long dives now and for us in hawaii summertime the water gets really warm in the shallows so you might want to get a 1.5 and then get a 3 or 3.5 for the winners like i said it's for long dives they're built for long dives uh, this however doesn't have the reinforced stitching on it because I created the reinforced stitching What was it right? During the Omilu suit time. Yeah, so when I dropped the Omilu suit when that came out last year That one had the reinforced stitching. That's when I created it The reason why this one doesn't have it is because I actually had this design since then <laughs> and It was an added feature so that all the stitching it seals it off so that if you rub the reef hit the reef or if the the stitching begins to you know a knot comes undone and it starts to peel away you have an added layer of defense and it seals all that off yeah so this is was a <laughs> this is a sample suit technically and before i do any suit i order the samples i want to make sure that it looks good it feels good and not only that I'll like it, but you guys will like it. So there's a little mini suit, right? You got the, the reinforced stitching. And uh, I have a video too on putting on, taking off, and maintaining your wetsuit. Also, I hang dry all of them. So you can see I have a hanger. Um, I can hang dry them inside out for two days and then hang dry it like this for the rest of the way. And I keep it like this. This keeps the, all the creases out 
all the folds and the creases. Um, cause you know, I mean, it depends on where you store your suit. If you have somewhere to hang it, cause if you just throw it with all your dive gear and then your, your dive gear goes on top, right? The weight creates creases and it, the crease is nearly impossible to come out. So you want to hang it, make it look nice and crisp every use. And our suits have pockets on the side. So we have two pockets on the thighs, right and left with a smaller opening. And that's where you keep your crack pipe ready handy ready for throw so back to the Ulua suit we're still taking pre-orders it's as all our pre-orders is 20 percent off retail price so although you know it's the suits are currently in production and you gotta wait a little bit for the suits to come in you save money you save money and during that time you have another suit or if you have another suit you can use then you can run that up until your new suit comes in. So the Yamamoto 19 neoprene. And I hope you guys like them. I'm, I'm always eager to hear feedback on the suits. I'm always eager to find ways to improve the suit. Um, you know, it's a, it's a learning process for, for me. It's a learning process for everybody. So whatever I can do to make the suits that much more better for you guys, stronger and help you guys, hopefully shoot some more fish. Lastly, uh, we can talk about blue water gear. The blue water gear I use. So I've shot, you know, a handful of Ono, a handful of Mahis, a handful of Shibis. Um, we don't go blue water too often, but it doesn't mean that you you don't want to have the right gear when that opportunity comes. I'm always itching to get out of blue water. I love eating Ono. You can eat Ono ceviche, fish tacos, sashimi, Ono belly, fried Ono belly, like any possible way you need only it's one of my favorite and they're the most action-packed to fight so I'm always eager to get out and I want to make sure that I'm 100% ready that when it's time to go blue water that if the opportunity comes I just hope I don't miss <laughs> so I use an evolve evolve float this thing is good because you know when uh, you're kind of tired and lazy you can just jump on it like a boogie board but I use a blue water float and I made this um, where one of the, these are one of the Kui belt holders from Omir and I rigged it on here so I can put a dive float on it. I think Evolve makes, makes their own dive float for it, if I'm not mistaken. But that's what I do. I also added up, you know, some tuna clips so I can run breakaway. Like I was saying with my cap 140, I can run breakaway so that when I shoot, um, it's fighting this and I'm just holding on along for the ride drop me, you know So when doing blue water you need chum and you need a flasher set the flasher set Will help attract whatever's in the water and there's many different flasher sets. You can make your own um, They have some pre-made and uh, you can buy you know a couple pre-made ones to put it together like how I do I used to create my own flasher setup and I bought a bunch of those Mako spear guns flashes are about this big and it comes with a nice bag and then you know mono crimp you know you can add beads on it uh you can add little squid skirts on it you know you can you know you can practically create your own flasher with just mono crimps and some flashers or even spoons uh, i had friends that use they would grab a spoon they flatten it punch a hole and then they'll just clip it on and you just have a bunch of flash you know spoons like this uh, but this is what I use. I've used it once. Yeah, I used it once and the way it bounces in the water and it, it moves in the water, it it's it's a party. You know, it flashes super well. And um, what I like about this setup that I'm about to show you is that my compared to my older setup with a bunch of mono and cramps, you know, making them long is that it tangles. It tangles easy and it's frustrating when you're trying to jump in but you're still undoing your flashers and then you gotta untangle it you want to jump in the water ready and start to drift so I did away with that and this is the setup I got so I got this uh, Spearmaster almost football looking float I just just hold my flasher so I can either use this rope that it comes with to attach it to my float or I can let it float on my own because it's strong enough connected to this reel this is a utility reel 
by Mako Spear Guns. And what it does is there's a latch here that when it's weighted in the water, you hold the latch and then it drops. And then you can stop it where you want it. It locks in place. And then you can just uh, reel it up. And you're done. Saves a lot of time and effort untangling mono and line. So I attach this directly to the float. I added one of the gun bungees just to add extra bounce. Add an extra skirt. But the main attraction is this ladder. <laughs> this ladder. And it, it doesn't look like much now, but in the water, the thing, it, it kind of like dances and it makes like an like S. And all it, all these, these little square or rectangles do is they flash up and they flash down and it's super bright. So we was on a drift and then uh, Joe was telling me like, man, that thing was just flashing. You could see it from the top of the water when he was boatman, he was watching us. And he said that thing was just going off. Like it's super, super bright. And in the water, it looked pretty bright too. Um, I only used this setup once, nothing came in. So, but then again, it's blue water. You know, not every time you're gonna run into something, you drift for eight hours and not see anything. So, so because this ladder was so good, I was like, you know what? <laughs> I bought another one. So on the ladder comes these squids and it has the weight on already. So, and that's the bottom of the ladder so what I did is I added a split ring and added a double ladder and it comes with a squid that's that's just how much I liked it and now I have more you know length in the water column that I'm covering by making the flasher set longer and I get the way this thing is built with wire and um, you know it's not one single string it's two strings coming down is that it's not gonna tangle <laughs> so I just throw it in my chum bag when I'm ready, I just throw it in the water. It's not gonna tangle. So that's what I use. Some flashers, and then lastly, I got my bungee. So the bungee connects. So the setup goes like this. It goes dive float. So you all float to this bungee, which is about 25 feet. That clips on to my, that, uh, okay, my float line my regular float line the 40 feet one the white one this is also by kimchi tag lines by the way um so it goes 25 40 and then that 40 goes to my gun i think that's why i use the white breakaway clutch because i think my line my line is white you know make everything look nice and uniform not all kind of hammer jam colors you know that kind so that's <laughs> what i use the kimchi tag lines bungee that Rube made for me too so thank you Ru, for that and I think that's it besides my chum bag but that that's about all the gear that I use I mean no this is through years you know of diving and progression and what I like what I don't like buying new gear selling this you know selling this buying that selling this until I found the setup that I like the most and once I got here I really don't have to buy anything else besides you know maintaining gear you know eventually I don't need a new snorkel eventually I'll need a new mask new fins maybe foot pockets instead or just a blade um, but as long as you maintain your gear wash it down thoroughly you know for enclosed shotguns you want to take out the, the shaft and spray down the whole track and then make sure that you pretty much jam that water hose in the trigger mech and yeah this our all spear fishing gear is not cheap it adds up but if you can make the gear last then you can get your money's worth out of the gear you know what i'm saying like when i first started adventure wetsuits my roy wetsuit that was a 2018 is 2000 20 now so it's two years already that's why I, I, you can get multiple suits pre-order save 20 percent off then you can have multiple suits so that way you're not running the same suit constantly constantly put more wear and tear on top of one suit but if you alternate suits every other week 
then you just double the lifetime so take every gear um, you know I'm not telling you go out and buy all this gear you know same exact setup that I have or you know spend it by the best gun the most expensive wetsuit the whatever it may be buy what works for you at the end of the day when you're in the water your comfort level is based on the gear that you have and if you're not comfortable in your gear <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a bad dive day I'm, I'm really interested to hear your feedback on the gears you use or you know something that I can improve something that I don't use that maybe that you use I'm interested in I'd love to try it and see what works for me and I hope you guys you know take some um, notes if there's stuff that you like and want to try and then try them out let me know how they do for you and yeah I hope you guys like this video until next time like subscribe and join us on alright guys before I go and put all this stuff away uh, we did a giveaway the last video where you seen me get super lucky and shoot a 47 pound sheepy tuna in like 30 feet of water and I had you guys drop all your comments down and all of them <laughs> I read all of them okay don't get me wrong again I read all of them and everybody has a great story to tell I'm not gonna pick one based off the story and based off the catch so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this randomizer go and it's gonna pick it's just gonna be randomly picked four people for me on top through the comments so if your name pumps up then you're a winner and if you did win be sure to email me at contact at giving me your uh, name and mailing info and I'll get you your gift card over to you thank you guys for your support and feedback and I hope all these videos help you and get you closer to that fish you want to shoot until next time like subscribe and join us on our next venture shoot